Hi hey, Stampers! Another video tutorial coming at you. This one is for the gift box punch board. I've mentioned this in a few posts on my blog and I wanted to do a little video on how to actually make one of the boxes. So I'm gonna do that first and then I'll show you some of the ones that I've got kicking around here. And the first thing you're gonna do is, much like the envelope punch board if you have it, is you're gonna look up your paper size for your box. And today we're just gonna make the smallest box that they've got on here, the six by six. So that's what I've cut my cardstock to. So we've got our piece of cardstock and we've got our board. And on the board, you're gonna see this little hidey hole for your score or for your bone folder. You're also gonna see a little flap right here that comes out so that you can use the larger sheets of paper right up to 12 by 12 um, for a four by four by four box. You can use a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and then you follow the lines on here as well. So this will make sure that you can score all the way out for your, your 12 inch paper. We're not gonna need that arm today, but it is there. You've got your punch here for your divots and as well on the opposite side, and I'll show you when I make the box, you're gonna make your little hooks so that you can close your box. So that's, it's got the little feet actually too so that it won't slide anywhere when you're, when you're making your box. So that is the info on the board and now we're actually going to make a box. So like I said, I've got a piece of cardstock that's cut to six by six. So we're gonna make a box size that's square 1.75 all the way around. So for this six by six piece of paper, we're gonna want a start line and a diagonal line. Both of these are small, S for small. And what you're gonna see here on this box, you're gonna see start line here, so that's small. And then up here, you're gonna see diagonal line, which is also small. That's not true for every one of the boxes. Um, here it's a small and a medium. Here it's a large and a medium. So it'll, it'll vary depending. But what you're looking for are start line and diagonal line. Your start line is here and your diagonal line is up top. So we're gonna need small and small. So we're gonna put our paper in. We're gonna line it up with our start line, which is this, the S for small. And then we're going to punch. We're gonna score down. We're gonna score all the way across. And then that diagonal line was a small as well. So that's it for one side. We're gonna go in again small, score down, across, and diagonal. Again, down, across, diagonal. And one more time, line it up with the S. down, across, diagonal. So now you'll see on here we've got divots on one side of our corners. So what you're going to want to do is flip it over and line it up at that small line again. So this is going to give you the divots on both sides. So see we've got two here, we've only got one here. So you're going to turn, line it up with the small again, and do that all the way around. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of paper and you're going to put it in the other way. So we've got a little groove here to punch our corners. So you're going to put your corners in here and punch and you're going to end up with this little hook. And that is what you're going to use to close your box. It also corner rounds the edges, makes it look nice and pretty. So we're all done with that. Next what we're going to do is we've got horizontal lines going across at the tip and then across the middle as well. So what I usually do once I've got my whole piece of paper done is I go ahead and fold on all those horizontal lines. So every time I turn my page I have two lines where I can fold right across and at the tip, right across and then at the tip. Okay, So you can kind of see the box coming together. We have those diagonal lines here and what I find easy enough to do if they're scored is just pick up the box 
and fold that diagonal line in. This is a brand new piece of paper. I haven't folded this before, so this is how easy it's going to be when you go to do it. You've got all of the straight lines folded, so when you go to fold these two edges together, that diagonal line should push in. And this is a piece of cardstock, not DSP. DSP isn't even easier to do. Um, this is thicker, but again, just push that in. So then on the inside, you've got your little flap here, and then you can use your fingers to flatten those seams out. So there, they've all been done. Easy peasy. So then you've got a box that sits like that. And what you're going to want to do then, some people, some tutorials that I've done, and I did a, a box I'll show you in a second where we stapled these down so that you can actually put something in here and it doesn't get in the way. Um, there have been times I've, I've gifted um, earrings or a little gift with this and I haven't had to staple those edges down. Um, they they kind of move to the side anyway when you've got something in there. So use your discretion. You can leave them open so that it's almost like an explosion box when they open it. Or you can use our handheld stapler and just staple those down or use some Tombow and glue those down. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to bring want to bring opposites together. So my two on the ends are going to come together. And I'm going to hook those in. And of course, they're not going to work on the video. There we go. Perfect. So you've got your two inner ones. And then I'm going to see how those push together and they keep themselves away from whatever's in the box. It works. Trust me. Then you're going to want to take these two hooks. There. And they go together as well. So there's no adhesive needed unless you want to, no staples needed unless you want to. It closes and opens without the use of any other tools. That's how you make a box on this gift box punch board. How cool is that? Now bear with me for a second because I'm going to take the camera off the stand. It might wiggle a little bit. But what I want you to see are all of the boxes that I've got here. I'm a very visual person and I'll, I'll post this in the post when um, you'll see the pictures of all these. But what I did was I went and I made one of every box. Because there are times I'm looking at those numbers on that lovely board right over here. I'm looking at the numbers and I'm going, yeah, that doesn't really tell me much of anything. <laughs> I need to see it. And some of them are very square. Some of them are tall and thin. And I just, I can't visualize that on my own. So I went and made one. And then what I did is I put a little post-it on them so that I can see what measurements I need to look up on the board so that I know how big to cut my paper. Not too shabby, eh? So that's one of my little tricks, and you'll see the photos of that on the blog post. This is one of the boxes we made when the box board came out. Um, this was at the Stampin' Up! Fall Conference in Truro, Nova Scotia, and this is using some of the, the DSP that was in the holiday catalog, the Thicker Christmas DSP, and a little tag and some of the, the ribbon on there. This is another one that we made flatter, but still that square look to it. This one's for Halloween with some of the twine. And there is there are new colors in that thicker twine as well. This is one of the first ones I did with some of the ribbon. All Christmassy. Just so you can kind of see the, the look of the different boxes. A lot of them have already been gifted. I've used this board like you wouldn't believe. This is one of the tutorials I'm going to post today too because somehow it got overlooked at Christmas time. I did a video tutorial on this little box and it never got posted so I'm going to include that in this post with this video as well so you can look just below and you'll see this one. But it's for the Santa stash and with the Nutcracker and the Santa and you can put little candies in here. How cool is that? So that's the 1.75 1.75 times 3.25 box. Easy peasy. You just cut a slit and you'll be able to see that in the other video tutorial. But how cool is that? Some DSP to cover the staples because we stapled the sides and then you can just pop any candies you want in there. I popped them through here but you can open this just as easily to pop more candies and I use those as little place settings uh, at Christmas time which was really super cool. And then I did post some pictures on this one but I'm going to show you these as well. And these are some of the, the box stacks that I did. And I did these using the Encore inks, the gold and the silver. I used the jute ribbon from the Occasions catalog on this one, and this is just the cotton ribbon from the catalog. Um, and this is the Irresistibly Yours DSP. I am in love with this DSP. And these are all six of the patterns that you get. 
I brushed that with the Encore ink and then wiped off all the excess and made three different sizes of the boxes and stacked them. How cool would that be for wedding gifts, eh? So, so awesome. That's just a little idea of what you can do with this gift box punch board. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And these are just the boxes. There's other stuff you can do too. So stay tuned for other video tutorials that I'll have on some of the other creations that you can make using this gift box punch board. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you don't have one of your own, oh, get one. Get one quick. This and the envelope punch board. Awesome tools to have in your craft room. Hope you like the video. Happy stamping.